Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and welcome to today's discussion. I have a couple more discussion videos that I'd like to make here for the 324 Necropolis League because I've still been playing Necropolis. I've been having a lot of fun. I saw this particular post and it struck a particular chord. It resonated well with me because for me, since Heist League, Necropolis League has actually been the league that I have put the most time back into playing Path of Exile. I kid you not, since the end of 2020, uh, in terms of time played on characters, this league, 324, has been the time where I have played just the most. I've played only three characters. I'll chat about those three characters and how fun they've been and ranking them and discussing them in detail in another future video discussion. But today I wanted to talk about this question. Was Heist League the most ambitious league in Path of Exile's history? And it comes as a great question because I was thinking back, all right, what, what about Necropolis and what about my playing experience, and maybe the same is true for you, has made Necropolis so attractive, so enjoyable, right? Has it necessarily been the league mechanic? Has it been previous league mechanics and previous dis levels of enjoyment over the last several leagues that are just in comparison? What exactly has been the catalyst for me, and I'm sure for many others, to play quite so much uh, of Path of Exile over the last league, over the ongoing league that's going on presently still. It's still here, even though, you know, everybody is getting ready here in the U.S. for holiday weekends and kind of the kickoff of summer. Players are still playing. Trade, I would say, overall is still pretty healthy. You get uh, pingbacks on trade, so that's good news. Uh, so why? Why is that? What has been the gap and what have been the reasons between, like, played a ton during Heist, played a ton during Delirium. I've played a good amount in between there, uh, including some dedicated time in Ruthless. And then I've also taken time off from Path of Exile. So what exactly uh, has been so enjoyable about Necropolis? And what was so enjoyable about Heist that kept, kept me going as a player? So this thread is great. Very helpful for today's discussion. Uh, if you've got thoughts on any of these topics, feel free to drop a comment down below as always. Big shout out and thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters. And with all that said, let's dive in. Okay, so just looking back on it now, this is by Rytasaur. This is a post that was posted about five days ago on the Path of Exile subreddit. Just looking back on it now, I feel like it's almost underappreciated, it being Heist League. Heist is almost underappreciated with how ambitious the Heist League was and what it brought to Path of Exile. Viewing it from the perspective of League-only co content, right? League-only content, and not from a League with core gameplay changes, right? Because really, Heist was unto itself. It's a separate thing. If you never want to interact with Heist, you really don't have to. But if you really want to interact with it, then of course it's an extensive gameplay uh, experience for you to dive into. Heist really did bring a lot to the table. He lists five or six things here. One, a ton of new uniques to play around with, creating tons of new build archetypes. Two, five new boss fights. Three, a ton of new item bases that brought interesting implicits. Four, alternate quality gems, the biggest legacy of Heist, in my opinion, eventually becoming the transfigured gems of today. I think that's absolutely true. Transfigured Gems and all of the builds that are coming out with Transfigured Gems would not exist had there not been the alternate quality gems. Like, Heist was clearly a stepping stone to where we're at today. Uh, fifthly, nine Heist Rogues to interact with NPCs, gear, and take with you on different Heists. So there's a great story element to it. I know a lot of players who play Path of Exile don't play for the story. I don't play it for the story, but... It's nice that there is a lot of story there with the NPCs. And then building off that, a lot of narrative lore and world building in the form of either unique item flavor text or through rogue-specific quests. A lot of voiced dialogue in a showcase of the then revamped dialogue system, which to this day remains woefully unused in my opinion. I know the League was universally panned due to the plethora of bugs that plagued it during its initial release in addition to so much waiting for doors to open, but I think the long-lasting effect of the League was probably the most ambitious in Path of Exile's history. That was the sentence that hooked me. That was, as I read through, I thought, okay, this is, this is pretty good. This is a pretty good argument. But that sentence really summarized and nailed this post um, for me to say a couple days ago and to think on it and to go, yeah, I, I think that's right, actually. Uh, but more on that in a moment. All of that, and especially during the short three-month time span that was the norm during that time for producing new leagues. Uh, 
In contrast, the many leagues in the past few years have been relatively tame. On their own, they hold so little weight to what Heist brought to PoE, often needing the base game changes, Atlas, reworks, etc., paired with them to really match up. I do understand that most of the PoE 1 team has moved to working on PoE 2, which explains how simplistic the last few leagues have felt. And it's also been one of the reasons why I've been so vocal and upset for the last couple of years, but I'm enjoying PoE again, so there you go. I'm no longer vocal and upset. But I really miss having complex big leagues like Heist and how they drastically affected the game for better or for worse. What do you think? I'd like to know what you think is the most ambitious league in Path of Exile's history. Now, before we get on to any of the interesting comments here, I, I think this is this is nailed on. I mean, this is absolutely spot on. This is nail on the head, whatever expression, whatever phrase you want to use. I think this is right. In terms of player power level, I think conversations are different, right? We oftentimes have this debate and discussion around here in G3 about which league actually brought the most amount of power level to players. I think Delirium unequivocally brought a ton of power to players. Harvest unequivocally brought a ton of crafting power to players. When Ascendancies first came out, that unequivocal... I mean, you would... Players build characters around... Uh, around Ascendancies, and when you get your first Ascendancy in Act 3, your character oftentimes feels totally different. It feels like your build begins to come online, whether or not it's a leveling build or whether or not it's an endgame version of a build. The Ascendancy tree is absolutely a huge amount of power. So you got Delirium, you got Harvest, you got Ascendancy. There's many other leagues where new power was added. But in terms of a discussion, this is a kind of a new angle on this discussion, about which league was the most ambitious, which league on its own brought the most to Path of Exile. Not necessarily the most power to the player, but the most overall. The most content, the most replayability, the most individual independent uh, play styles that are available through this league content. And I think prior to Heist, I think I, I would have answered this question in terms of standalone content for you to play through and really a depth, there's a pun there, a hint, a depth of player experience I would say it was Delph. That's what it would be, at least for me and my experience. It was very, very ambitious. It was a standalone style of approaching content. At that point, players absolutely were clamoring just, just torches and pitchforks every single league that there wasn't an alternative leveling system to level up. You had to go through the 10x story campaign. Even though the 10x story campaign was relatively new at that point, still within a few years um, of Oriath coming out, like in the second half of... Um, the campaign coming out with a second second set of acts. Like even still, players did not want to go through the 10X story campaign. And so as Delve came out, it was like this oh moment. Like people were like, okay, could how how quickly can I get into Delve and get away from the 10X story campaign? And even still today, there are players who compete on the ladder, right, in order to be able to delve the deepest uh, in terms of voice acting and NPCs and an alternate zone and kind of this little mini game where you're playing around the cart and you can farm all sorts of unique currencies and you can craft uniquely through Delve. Like Delve was very, very ambitious in its heyday. It also brought boss fights to it. It also had this kind of like scaling level of rewards to the content that you played. If you didn't want to do maps, but you wanted to just go do Delve, you kind of could. Um, so it was very, very ambitious unto itself. But after Delve then, we really don't have something that's that ambitious. I would say Synthesis was very, very ambitious, but it was so poorly received and so poorly executed in terms of the gameplay side of it. Um, I, I don't think it compares even to Delve, right? I think Synthesis, while it is my favorite league of all time because of the unique items that we were able to craft, I don't think it compares just with the scale of Delve and then following up on Delve with Heist. So I think this is a really good answer. I think this is this sentence like really, really cap capstones this whole discussion. The long-lasting effects of the league probably show it to be the most ambitious in Path of Exile's history. And we don't see leagues made like this anymore. Some of the complaints that I see nowadays about Necropolis still floating around are about the ambition of Necropolis, that it's confusing, that you've got to fill up X number of graves, and we don't want to do that, that there's no, like, super endgame uber-bossing sort of layers, etc. Like, when players complain and build bingo boards about things that they would like in a league, 
oftentimes they're comparing and thinking about adding things that are from these previous very, very ambitious leagues. Even leagues like Harvest, where there was a lot of ambition there for setup and for crafting and for endgame bossing and for endgame crafting and for production of items, whether that's in solo self-found or in trade league environments. So there's, there's like these couple of leagues that are very, very ambitious. Synthesis, Heist, even Delirium, that bring player power, but also there are some of these leagues like Heist and like Delve that bring this and Synthesis, that bring a level and a depth of engagement for replayability, for enjoyment with NPCs. Like, I know a lot of players don't even... I know a lot of players who care absolutely nothing for Path of Exile lore, but they know something about how Nico wants to delve deep and he likes the smell of delve for whatever reason. I know players who care nothing about NPC dialogue in Path of Exile and turn off NPC dialogue, but every once in a while they'll see something that's said in Heist and they'll get a chuckle out of it. Like, that that says something. If you don't enjoy any aspect of, like, NPC lore and NPC interactions and all of a sudden the NPCs are pulling you in and like, hey, you might want to pay attention because this is actually kind of funny. That's a pretty big success. On top of that, then there's player power and player archetypes that are available due to gems and, and due to sheerly being able to farm for replica uniques. That's, that's a whole market unto itself in Trade League, and it builds and allows for build archetypes in solo self-environment. So it's really, really, really interesting in terms of the level of replayability and the grandiose scope of heist. I would even say a league like Blight is a league that we haven't mentioned here today, but I would say league a league like Blight where there was a clear definitive mini game. Sanctum is another one. A clear definitive mini game where you can go and interact and kind of play around in. I would say those leagues are different from let's say Heist or Delve because while those are are clear mini games and they are clear expressions of tower defense games or um, of uh, bullet hell games where you know you want to have no hit runs and those sorts of things and the the whole roguelike genre that those sorts of leagues, while they clearly are defined and shaped after other genres of games, they don't scale in comparison. And I think the long answer to this, or the short answer to this long-winded question and conversation, at least in my opinion, is that one, game designers from PoE 1 are now working on PoE 2. I'm not complaining about it, I'm just saying that's a factor. And then two, I think the level of ambition and the level of work that it takes to build some of these very unique leagues has just been shown probably to grinding gear games that it's not received to the level of the work that's put in right that's a very very sad thing to say but if you are going to work on let's say a league for a three-month cycle and you're going to say no we really want to do a big league we really want to make sure this is a league comparable to heist comparable to delve comparable to Harvest, comparable to Delirium, in terms of what it adds to the game, its replayability, and its long legacy effects for the game. Well, that takes time. It takes time testing, it also takes time designing, and then it takes time implementing and tweaking and balancing. And so for all of that to be said, I just don't think there's as much level of ambition recently, really, in many of the leagues. We had um, you know, the ancestors and sort of the, the auto battler that was going on there. Um, we've had like ultimatum. We've had some leagues that have had some interesting attempts, but I don't think in terms of the scale, in terms of the level of ambition of the sheer stuff that was getting added and changed to the game. I don't think we've seen something since heist, but I think Necropolis is coming somewhat close. It comes somewhat close in terms of the scale of what you want to be doing with and playing with on your maps, right? Like for a long time throughout this league, through the first several weeks of the league, players were trying to manipulate and play with the different sorts of rewards that were on the map, right? Printing divines. That was a whole scheme. That was a whole thing this league. It was a talking point. It was a point of, uh, <laughs> of great player investment and great player rewards. Now, that might seem like a small thing, but that actually drew a lot of players in to try and play with that style and to make certain currency and to and to hope every time you click a map, okay, what what are the things that are going to be offered to me? What are the downsides? What are the what are the effects? What are the bonuses? A lot of players that's annoying, but in terms of the ambition, it's another layer onto your map rolling and onto your player experience. So I don't think in terms of the the 
long-term effect. I don't think players are going to be looking back on that and going, oh yeah, that should definitely stick around and, and I can't wait for that to be here because a lot of players are annoyed by it. But at the same time, I think in terms of the level of ambition that's there, that's a big thing to bring to the table from a game design perspective to say every single zone you're in is now potentially going to be re-rolled and every single monster in it is going to be impacted in a different way. That's a pretty ambitious goal to start with. That's a pretty ambitious nutshell elevator pitch for a league to say what if we do something that changes all of the monsters in every single instance that you go into, whether you're leveling, whether you're in maps, etc. What if we did something that revisits and reinvigorates every single pack that players have and we add another layer of RNG? I would say a lot of players, uh, average players, custom, you know, uh, how, to, how to put that, average players who do not customize their maps too much, who just out and go, they oftentimes don't interact with the map device, right? They don't want to spend their chaos, they just like to hoard their chaos, and so they don't like to do big juiced up maps, those sorts of things. I would say what this league has done in Necropolis, it's given players a vision for what they can do for juicing their league. That is with, in combination, of course, with the Scarab we work, and with the Atlas passive. So it's not just inherently Necropolis. But I think what we're seeing with Necropolis is a league that's a little bit more ambitious than something like, I don't know, run around the totem and kill monsters and maybe you'll get something good and maybe you won't. That's more akin to like a strong box league or that's more akin to something like Breach or that's even more something that's akin to like Abyss League where it's like, yeah, there's an alternate zone and there's a monster uh, that's a boss and yeah, there's one or two uniques. But in terms of the ambition of it to change every single zone and potentially every pack in the zone and how you're going to interact with it, how you're going to farm it, how you're going to juice it. That level of ambition is not there for Abyss, for Strong Box, for Breach. It is there presently with Necropolis with the way how that map device works for Necropolis. But anyway, here's one of the other comments is from Wolvisaurus. So we've got dinosaurs. This is interesting. We've got Rhydosaur and then Wolvisaurus interacting uh, on this comment thread. So here's Wolvisaurus's thoughts on this topic. I'll preface this by saying I always liked Heist conceptually. So did I, by the way. I was super stoked for a stealth-like game to come, and then I was, you can go back and watch videos from Heist. I was super bummed that, like, the entire league changed from, like, a don't get touched, don't sound the alarm, to just blow everything up and it doesn't matter anymore. But anyway, that's that's, a, that's, a, that's anger from, like, six years ago. We don't have to care about that anymore. So, continuing. He says, I love it when all my gang is level five with at least some gear, but I dread the build-up every league. Heist is and has always been a terrific source of pretty much anything you could ever want that isn't a boss drop. But since it doesn't interact with the current league mechanic in most cases, Sentinel being the exception, it feels bad to engage with. And also, bugs suck. That said, I think the reason it feels so grandiose is because it features a ton of incidental dialogue and lore. Nine rogues, some extra other NPCs, a cat that is most certainly alive on a farm somewhere, some real crappy villains you can beat up, it's got it all. Even the guards have loads of unique designs, voice lines, and whatnot. This didn't pay off in the long run, which is why I think GGG has never went back to this league design. I agree with them there. Was that because it was and has remained a pretty buggy mess? Who can say? I think it was because people don't want to wait for NPCs to open doors. I think I think that's right. I think that is a massive part of it. If doors in Heist got the hands in breaches treatment that breaches have recently gotten, right? So instead of having to click on hands in breaches, if you just walk over them, then they pop open. Like if doors in Heist got that treatment where your NPC does their action, does their animation action, but as soon as you approach the door, the door just opens. Like, let the NPC do their action or whatever. That's fine, because you've already designed that. The game has already designed all of those unique animations. So that's great. Keep that there. But once you approach the door, make it an automatic sliding door, etc. Make, make it so that way. As soon as you're there, you can continue to approach it. That quality of life, I think, would absolutely blow up um, the, the number of players that interact with Heist. Okay, that all said, this reminds me of the most striking moment in all of PoE history for my part, the revelation in Synthesis League when you find out who Venarius actually is. I don't care much for story bits in Path of Exile until you do. You all know that feeling, but that moment had me going, what? So this is again a player who's got 185 updutes, right? So in terms of overall updutes, lots of players are agreeing with this. This is a, a somewhat representative and somewhat popular opinion, at least inside the thread. And I think this means something, right? Again, most of us who play Path of Exile, we don't play for the for the NPCs, for the dialogue, for the lore, for the theming even. We play for a power trip. That's what many of us play for. 
We play for a power trip to see our character go from point A to point B, from point B to staying on point B to not able to get to point C, until all of a sudden we get the right drops, the right currency, the right crafting, and now we can take on point C and continue that process through point D. We're all playing a Skinner box. We want to see how well we can go as we press that button and find the enjoyment that we are uh, engaging with. And every once in a while, Path of Exile gives us these kind of NPC moments. And I gotta say, coming back to Necropolis and the current league that we're in, when I heard, just heard the word Necropolis and that there was going to be a Gravekeeper for 324, that solidified in my mind as a guy who loves to play summoner builds and witch builds and minion builds. I was like, I don't even care if the league mechanic has anything to do with summoner builds and minion builds. I'm at least coming back and giving this a thorough try because the NPC looks awesome. The the league itself sounds like it could be good, a crafting league with some other modifiers as well. It sounds like it could be really fun. So I'll at least give it a shot. So for me as a player who's been very upset, very vocal about how POE 1 and POE 2 have been handled and announcements and communication about all that, as someone who has said, I am not excited about the direction of POE 1 over the last couple of years, coming back and playing Necropolis, the base game has been great. I think that the league has been okay. And I think the level of ambition that was shown throughout the league and still ongoing throughout the league has been really, really well received, at least for me, and appreciated in comparison with the leagues that have been of recent late over the last couple years. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to read your thoughts down below in the comments. Any of your comments down below, I will endeavor to get to and respond to as time allows. So thanks so much for joining us for today's discussion. And I hope if you still are playing the ongoing 324 Necropolis League like I am, that the ongoing 324 Necropolis League is the league. A Mirror of Calandra drops for you. And maybe 325, maybe, I doubt it. But just maybe, it will be another ambitious league. But details on that, more to come later on throughout the summer, along with details about POE2. Once again, thanks for joining us, and I look forward to catching you next time. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again, and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.